Okay, here's a look around a uh, high voltage magnet charger, it's called, or um, it's a method of charging uh, metals with the magnetic force. Uh, it's a pretty simple piece of equipment, really. You charge up some capacitors of very high voltage and then discharge them uh, through a heavy duty coil here and you have the piece of material you want to magnetize set across the uh, pole pieces um, this um, this is a coil round uh, basically a, a U U-shaped uh, um, uh, steel piece of material inside so when you put a current through the coil the um, magnetic force generated at these two poles here uh, will cross a, go across and if you put the piece of material inside that completes the circuit and uh, this piece of equipment here which I've just been servicing uh, can go up to nearly a thousand volts on the capacitor charge it's uh, quite a nice piece of equipment quite old uh, works very neatly has a variac on the input which actually varies the um, input mains to 30 volts into a very large uh, transformer I don't know why the transformer is so big because it's uh, not continuous current it's only a um, small current uh, slowly charges the capacitors anyway it's got a giant transformer um, then charges up these um, very large capacitors which you can see inside there's a bank of uh, th uh, six uh, three in on each side in series will give you the voltage and there's a relay contactor inside and a little bit of circuitry, safety circuitry etc and it comes out through this cable here now um, I've got a little uh, gauss meter here or tesla meter a gauss tesla the same um, the measurements of magnetic strength and it has a little uh, probe here which is a hall effect device on the end of this probe and um, on the uh, meter here which shows the actual strength and it's got a handy little uh, symbol here S for south or N for north so you know which is which now um, I've marked up uh, this this uh, coil here so you know that if you want to put a north magnetize something and end up with a north on this side you've got to face it on this side now um, here's a typical application, um, guitar pickup, uh, the strength of the magnets is very weak so I've taken them out, it used two bar magnets, uh, one on each side of the uh, pole pieces, I've got one here and one there, I've marked up the north side, now when I originally um, checked the magnetic strength, I'll show you, uh, if I Okay, uh, I'm going to sh show you the use of this um, magnetizer or magnet charger as it's called. So I've got um, a little bar magnet taken out of a pickup here. It's showing, it's hard to measure exactly, but it's showing it's a North Pole. Um, it's it's not massively strong it's very up and down so around 30 to 40 so um, what I can do is uh, I'll put it in here with the north pole facing to the north side here like so and then over here um, I'll ramp up the voltage Uh, we we'll put it up to about say about 800 which is pretty high 800 I've also been checking inside uh, that meter is not dead accurate this one's showing it's only about 770 but still pretty high and then all you have to do is press this red button here and it discharges the capacitors through the coil and here we go you watch the voltage drop bang so 
<laughs> you see the other magnets jump on the table because the, the, there is a field generated all around. Do it one more time, you can watch this one, bang, no movement. So I'll turn the voltage back down for safety. And now I'll take out the, um, the magnet here. <laughs> it's already dead strong. A bit of difficulty pulling off the pole piece, so let's pull it off. I'll put it down here next to the meter. Uh, take the Hall probe and let's see what we've got now. So, um, yeah, it's gone up to s yeah, I stand it up. It's, um, it's got a bit of glue on the bottom. Uh, so, yes, yeah, it's gone up to about, I'll run it along the side 60. I'll get the probe in 70. The position of the probe is very accurate, so you have to, even up to 80. So uh, there's been a massive increase in uh, magnetic strength. Um, you don't have to, I put it on maximum, so that's really magnetized, that's about the maximum. You can, uh, with less force, uh, I mean voltage and magnetic force, not magnetize it so high. And if you uh, turn the magnet round the other way and put a very smaller voltage pulse, you can actually demagnetize it as well. But that's a bit of fiddle if you wanted to set it. So I, I banged it up to maximum. I also did the other one that was in there. I've already done that one. And I'm going to reassemble it now. And uh, it should be really strong. Of course, this is not necessarily what you want in a guitar pickup. Uh, sometimes people demagnetize them to sort of make an aging effect and make it weaker. Not so much pull on the strings. But... Um, I, I I don't think, if you go too far, I find the pickup doesn't sound too good. A nice strong magnet uh, gives you a really punchy um, a punchy sound, and you should adjust really the effect with the number of turns of coil on the coil. And anyway, I'm going to reassemble it and uh, see what we've got. Um, so uh, that's basically the equipment. This thing's working really really well. Uh, very heavy piece of this coil really really heavy but ever so powerful these are um, mild steel which won't become magnetized themselves you can shape these things to fit round specific workpieces if you want this has been cut out actually to magnetize these old um, these old uh, ceramic magnets that were inside these uh, little DC motors they used to fit in there like that to give you the magnetized magnet while it was actually inside the workpiece. These are the magnets here. If I just show you, are out of um, brushless motors. Um, you can this one. It's very very strong. It sticks on there, and uh, it's got two poles, north and south. So when you roll it over, it goes to one side or the other. So it's got a magnet through it, and uh, same with um, same with this one. It's a pole on one side, and it rolls to the other side. It should do anyway. If um, if the mag if they lost their magnetism, these things, they uh, don't have a proper north and south. They get all um, soft and magnet poles all over the place. These are really strong, so you have to be careful when you put them down because they will attract each other and and really bang onto things. So I try and keep them together. If they bang together too hard, you can actually break them because magnets are very, very brittle. So um, there you go. This uh, little device here, as I said, it's got um, milli Teslas, or um, you can measure in uh, a Gauss as well. The Gauss figure is um, will give you a much bigger reading, but they're directly equivalent, um, just a different scale. Uh, this one can measure uh, DC, AC. Uh, you can hold the, you can do it on hold as well, which is very useful to find the maximum. I run it down here. Yeah, it's, oh, it goes up to 76. So you, you can easily find the max, rather than probe keeps um, trying to find the 
sweet spot on the probe can be set and um, take the hold off. And uh, you've got a range just in case you're um, too high or too low. So this is working really well, this piece of equipment. Um, I'm going to screw it back together again now and uh, just turn it off. There you go, relay drops out. So there you go. So here's the uh, pickup that I um, remagnetized earlier um, to bring the strength up as it was very weak. It's just one of a set of three and the other two were fine. Um, this one here is the one I actually remagnetized. You can see where I took that to take it apart. It was actually the neck one and it was a very low a magnetic strength on the poles. I was only reading about 30 milliteslas. Um, so now I've got the um, meter here uh, and I can show you the settings hopefully what we've got. Now this is um, the one that I did was the neck one. This is a, a middle and this is a marked up as a as the bridge one. Now if you check now the middle one often is uh, out of phase with the others of a magnetically to hum cancel. So we just check uh, the strength on the meter here. Yep, uh, it's reading nice and high, 60 odd. And it's a north showing up there, the north, and the middle one. And nearly around about the 60 mark, and it's a south, showing up as a south on the screen just there. And the uh, bridge one is, um, let's get the probe in the right place. Yeah, 60 coming up. If I put it on to the um, hold function, you'll see that I can get it in the right place. About 50, actually, sometimes the probe. And it's, um, as you can see, it's uh, the angle of the camera's got a bit of glare on the screen. It's a north. So uh, we've got um, a north, a south, and a north. So if you put all three in, if you select uh, a pair together, you get a hum cancelling. So um, the strength of the magnets is good, so that they should be okay magnetically now. But um, the actual uh, resistance of the, of the coils, um, I've connected up this meter here to the bridge one. And you can see, hopefully, if I can get an angle on the screen, you can actually read it without reflection. It's reading uh, about 7, nearly 8k kilo ohms. And I can actually measure the um, other functions with this. Uh, capacitance, we don't really need to know that, so let's go to inductance. Now at 10 kilohertz, it's having struggling to reach the inductance, but the Q is uh, nearly set around about seven, and the um, impedance is 20 odd K, so we don't need to know that. But I can change the frequency, 100 hertz. There's the inductance, 7.8 pennies, 100 hertz. The Q's drop right down to 0 0.6. And as we'd expect, the resistance would be low at a low frequency. Uh, resistance is about the same as a DC. If I go up to 1 kilohertz, inductance is uh, 7.2. The Q's gone up 2.9. And the impedance, resistance impedance has gone up, as we'd expect. And at 10 kilohertz, it struggles to find the inductance. The Q is around about seven. So um, that is on the bridge run. I can do the same on the um, 
on the other pickups. Um, it, it's not really necessary, it's just showing you how it works. I did measure the resistances on these with normal uh, meter, yeah, about uh, 7.9 kilo ohms for the bridge, 7.2 for the middle, and 7.1. Uh, for the neck, so less coil means less output, which would hopefully balance the set up. So I'm actually going to install two of these uh, coils into uh, a Hamer guitar, which has some very horrible sounding stacked humbuckers, which actually ruin the sound. So um, I'll be doing another video on that. So there you go, how to uh, measure and um, magnetize guitar pickups.